Hello and welcome to the episode 205 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, we have some real estate action, more sightseeing around Athens, and a productive 1969 recording session. On the 24th of July 1961, the Beatles, with Pete Best on drums, performed their 11th gig at the Litterland Town Hall in Liverpool. In 1962, the same lineup of the band gave another two-hour lunchtime performance at the Cavern Club in Liverpool. One year later, in 1963, the Beatles, now with Ringo Starr on drums, were engaged for the third of six consecutive nights at the Odeon Cinema in Weston Supermare, Somerset. Talking about Ringo, on this date in 1965, he brought Sunny Heights, a large Tudor-style house in Weybridge, Surrey. The house was less than a mile from John Lennon's own, Kenwood. The acquisition set the Starkey family back £37,000, about £730,000 in 2020 money. Sunny Heights was subject to several renovations in the three years Ringo lived there. Much of the work was done by Bricky Building Company, a business co-owned by the Beatles drummer since September 1964. John Lennon and Yoko Ono also briefly lived on the premises, after the Starkeys moved in 1968, but the house was eventually sold in May 1969. Let's move to 1967, with two prominent events. In Greece, the Beatles and their party of friends and relatives enjoyed another day of sightseeing. Again, the pleasant experience was marred by the presence of fans and journalists everywhere. Back in England, instead, the Fab Four and their manager Brian Epstein figured among a list of 64 signatories of a call for the legalization of marijuana. The call appeared as a full-page advertisement in The Times, with the title The Law Against Marijuana is Immoral in Principle and Unworkable in Practice. Organizing the signatures of everyone involved was no easy matter, especially since The Times advertising manager, Grant Davison, insisted on checking that all the people figuring as signatories had indeed agreed. Davison also insisted that the advert should have been paid in advance. A cheque of £1,800, about £33,300 in 2020 money, was sent to the Times from NEMS, paid off Paul McCartney's revenues. One could say that the advert was a success. Within a week, the House of Commons was discussing the matter, and eventually, the public debate raised from the advert led to the gradual depenalization of cannabis use in Britain, with cannabis and cannabinoids being downgraded from Class A drugs, the most dangerous, to Class B in the 1970s, and to Class C, the least dangerous, in 2004, before they were again moved to Class B in 2009. On the 24th of July 1968, the Beatles were at the EMI Studios between 7 pm and 2.30 am for a remake of Sexy Sadie. The band recorded 23 takes of the basic track. Then, they turned their attention to creating a tape of sound effects. The tape remained unnamed and unreleased, with one of the four taking the only copy at the end of the session. Before the end of our session, I want to thank you once again for your support, and remind you to please share the episode with your friends. As you know, I'm trying to build a community of music lovers here, and sharing the content you like might do wonders for that. And remember to visit www.simonmas.com support if you care enough to do a bit more. Thank you! Let's wrap things up with the long recording session happened on this date in 1969. Between 2.30 and 3.30 pm, Paul McCartney was at the EMI Studios to record a demo of Come and Get It, a song he intended to give to the Ivies, 
a band signed Apple. John Lennon was in the control room, but he offered no help. In one hour, Paul recorded piano, vocals, double tracked, bass, maracas, and drums. The song was also mixed in stereo, and a copy was given to Paul for the Ivies to ponder. The band accepted to record a note by note rendition of this recording, produced by McCartney, and, also at Paul's insistence, they changed their name into Bad Finger. The song became the main theme tune for The Magic Christian, Ringo's latest film. After the arrival of George and Ringo, from 3.30 to 10.30 pm, the Fab started working on Mean Mr. Mustard and Here Comes the Sun King, soon to be retitled Sun King, to avoid confusion with Here Comes the Sun. The two songs were taped as one continuous piece of music, but they were not originally conceived together. The rhythm track of the resulting piece was recorded in 35 takes. The band also recorded versions of Jim Vincent's Ain't She Sweet, Who's Lapped John, Up a Lazy River and Bebop Alula, that would have probably been included in the Get Back project if they had been recorded back in January 1969. Instead, Ain't She Sweet was included on Anthology 3 in 1996. This concludes today's episode. Join me tomorrow for lots of early gigs and more stories from the four you love. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.